Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Rishabh Jain. I am a qualified chartered accountant. I qualified CA back in 2015. Uh, I have been a post qualification experience of more than six years in the corporate tax advisory compliance and litigation. And today we will discuss about the taxation for salaried employees. So I hope you will like my uh, topic and I would like to share all the taxation impact for salaried employed with you. Yeah. So uh, first one is uh, for the financial year 21-22, income tax lab rates are as under. So up to 2,50,000. 2, and for the individual below 60 year, there is a no tax rate. And for the senior citizen also, there is no tax up to 2,50,000. And for the super senior citizen, uh, which is 80 years and above, there is also no tax. And for the second slab, it is uh, to exceeding 2,50,000 to 3 lakh. It is individual aged below 60 years, the rate is 5%. And for the senior citizen and super senior citizen, uh, this does not, uh, there is no tax rate. For the third category, uh, from 3 lakh to 5 lakh, the tax rate is 5% for the individual is it below 60 years and for the senior citizen it is 5% and for the super senior citizen it is still exempt. Fourth category is above 5 lakh to 10 lakh. Uh, the tax rate is 20% for all the individuals aged below 60 years, above 60 years or above 80 years. And the last one is uh, more than 10 lakhs. The tax rate is 30% for all the category of citizens. So, uh, along with the applicable tax rate, surcharge and CS will also be applicable. Uh, along with the rebate available under Section 87A, no tax liability will exist, rupees 5 lakh. Uh, so, however, no tax rebate available if the income exceeds rupees 5 lakhs. So, ultimately, rebate under Section 87A will be available if the your total income is up to rupees 5 lakh. The second one is surcharge and CS for the financial 21-22. So, Surcharge is applicable in the under the four categories. Rupees 50 lakh to 1 crore, applicable surcharge is 10%. And from 1 crore to 2 crore, it is 15%. And from 2 crore to 5 crore, it is 25%. And above 5 crore is 37%. And health and education says is applicable also. So the effective tax rate comes to 34.32 for the category uh, under income is uh, 50 lakh to 1 crore. And the factory tax rate is 35.88 for the category uh, for the income rupees 1 crore to 2 crore. And 39% is for the category for the income from 2 crore to 5 crore. And above 5 crore, the effective tax rate is 42.74. So the highest rate uh, is 42.74 if the income is my income is above rupees 5 crore. So uh, as per income tax act, the filing of return of income is compulsory. If the return of income, if the total income exceeds rupees two lakh fifty thousand, so generally due date of filing of return of income is thirty first July, but uh, for the financial 2021, CBD extended the due date from thirty first July to thirtieth September, and recently uh, uh, CBD has also extended the timelines uh, uh, from September to thirty first December. So you can file your return of income for the assessment twenty one twenty two up to thirty one thirty first December. So for the salaried employees, it is very difficult to manage your uh, TDS. So you have to uh, declare your investment proofs and deductions proof to your employer so that uh, there is an act, there is no uh, maximum deduction of TDS or there is no minimum deduction of TDS. So uh, employer has to deduct TDS if the estimated salary of an employee falls above the tax limit. So the liability is on the employer to deduct TDS. So you have to declare your investment with the employer uh, at proper time. So investment declaration is important for employee to ensure proper deduction of tax. So at the end of year, employee has to submit the proof of investment along with form uh, 12 double B. So it can be submit uh, in the January of financial year under consideration so that uh, higher deduction of TDS can be avoided. So uh, one point is, uh, one call out is uh, actual investment made at the year end can be different from the investment plan submitted. So, uh, for example, if you have submitted a uh, deduction under 
80 cs rupees 1 lakh 20000 but up to 31 march you have actually uh, utilize uh, full limit and you are eligible for the reduction under 80 cs rupees 1 lakh 50000 so in that case uh, you can still claim your uh, actual reduction under 80 c uh, rupees 1 lakh 50000 at the time of filing of return of income and you can claim refund uh, if actual if access tds has been acted uh, earlier was the employer so there are exemptions and deductions under section income tax uh, under various section of income tax so there is a standard deduction of rupees 50000 available so earlier the standard deduction of 40000 with effect from 1819 introduced to only place below components basically these two components were earlier allowed to the employee transport allowance rupees 1600 per month medical reimbursement of 15000 per annum so there is a concept introduced uh, in the finance uh, financial year 1819 uh, of the standard deduction so uh, right now there is a standard deduction of 50000 second one is hra so we have uh, uh, actually you this this is basic components uh, uh, in respect of de- which reduction is uh, claimed by all the employees so it is a special allowance provided by the employer to meet expenditure actually on the payment of rent so there are certain uh, conditions to claim the exemption of hra so first one is exemption amount so least of the three is exempt from tax uh, first one is 50% of the salary salary is equal to basic plus da only and the, if residential accommodation is metro cities and 40% of the salary is residential accommodation in other cities and second one is rent paid in excess of 10% of salary and third one is actual hra received so you can you can claim list of the following three categories from uh, for H, is hra exemption the second condition is uh, no residential accommodation is owned by the employee employees are actually incurred payment of rent so to claim uh, exemption of hra you have to uh, submit some documents with, to the employer first one is name and address of the landlord Uh, second one is pan of landlord where annual rent receipt exceed one lakh. Uh, in case landlord does not have a pan, a declaration is required to be filed. Uh, third one is copy of rent agreement plus original rent receipts. So here is the declaration format uh, for the no pan given by the landlord. However, there is no specific format prescribed under the Income Tax Act. Uh, so you can still uh, take that declaration from your landlord. to claim uh, exemption in the hra the rent tax rate rupees 1 lakh so second component is leave travel allowance so it is basically allowance provided by the employer to employee to be cost of travel for going anywhere only in india so, along with his family on leave from work so there are also uh, some conditions to claim exemption of hra so first condition is only cost of travel will be allowed and it will be and the table will be only by the air train or other public mode of transport and the condition is under so first one is travel by air so amount not exceeding air fare economy fare second one is place of origin and destination connected by rail and travel by any mode of transport other than air amount not exceeding first class ac rail fare third one is also uh, for the partly and fully uh, not connected by the rail route so in that condition you have claim reduction for the uh, recognized public transport exist amount not exceeding first class or deluxe class fare if no recognized transport exists so amount equivalent to first class ac rail fare so basically uh, the the rent uh, the uh, the travel expense cannot exceed the first class class fare so uh, for claiming lt reduction you have to still uh, some documents with the employer so that is ticket invoice and boarding pass for the flights are evidence of expenditure of cost of travel and uh, you have to also check declaration for the eligibility to claim reduction in the current block which we will discuss in the subsequent slide so there are certain points to remember for lt exemption so first one is it is only for the travel only so other expense like local convenience sightseeing expense do not qualify under this exemption and it is only for domestic travel of expense not for international trips and it we and exemption available for cost of travel incurred for employee and his family and family includes spouse and children parents brother sister only or male dependent of the employee 
employee cannot still claim LT exemption in every financial year. So basically, there is a concept of block. So that uh, block is of four years. So current, so currently the block is uh, 2018 to 2021, and the block is calendar year wise. So you can still claim uh, exemption for the two journeys in block of four calendar years. And and if you and there is a concept of also carry forward of unclaimed LTO block year to the next block year. So if an employee has not availed of LTO for one or two permit journey in particular block for four years, then he can uh, carry forward one journey to the next block. So next one is tax savings. So to save our tax, we we can we have many many options uh, under TC under TD and various other. Uh, sections for the health insurance scheme so there is an overview of tax saving schemes so under section 80c there is a wide range of option like epf epf lss fd so there is an, a uh, maximum cap of 1 rupees 1 lakh 50000 and second one is 80 triple c pension products so here is also maximum cap is 1.5 lakh and section 80 ccd uh, national pension scheme so there is reduction also 1 rupees 1.5 lakh so basically, uh, under these three sections, there is a combined deduction of rupees 1.5 lakh. So, uh, and uh, apart from that, there is an additional deduction for the uh, under section 80 CCD IB. It is additional deduction uh, in respect of NPS investment, uh, rupees 50,000. So you can claim uh, rupees 1.5 lakh under section 80 C and uh, rupees additional 50,000 under section 80 CCD IB. Second one is investment and expenditure under various other sections. We will discuss about here in brief. So there is an, a scheme of investment. Basically, investment scheme are PPF, EPF, tax saving FD for the five lock, five year lock-in period, uh, national saving certificates, so minus in the account. So basically, these are investment options. And second one is uh, others investment option also available under Section 80C. That is tax saving mutual fund (LSS), uh, tax life insurance premiums, pension plans for mutual funds, pension plans for insurance companies, pension plan scheme, and pension user. And third one is uh, you are uh, basically you are uh, incurring some expenditure in respect of which you can claim deduction under section 80C. That is first one is principal repayment housing loan. Second is stamp duty and registration cost of the house. And third one is tuition fees for the two children. So basically these are uh, expenditure uh, in, in day to day life, which we can claim and of uh, deduction under section 80c second one is uh oh, if you already know we are incurring expenditure on health and well-being so there is an, a uh, provision under section income tax act uh in in respect of claim of expenditure for the health and well-being so first one is section 80d this talks about medical insurance for the family and parents so here we can claim deduction of rupees one lakh and second one is physically 80u section under which we can claim deduction for the physically disabled SSEs. Uh, deduction is up to rupees 1.5 lakh, 1.25 lakh. And third one is section 80 DD. So he talks about medical treatment of disabled dependents. So here we can claim deduction up to rupees 1.25 lakh. Fourth one is section 80 DDB. So it talks about treatment of spite disease ailment. Uh, here we can claim deduction up to rupees 1 lakh. So under section 80 D, there is a wide coverage. So first one is uh, here I have divided into two categories, self spouse or dependent children and parents. So you can claim reduction separately for the parent and separately for the self spouse or dependent children. So first one is medical insurance premium. You can claim deduction for the medical insurance premium to, up to rupees 25,000. Second one is you can uh, contribute to the CGS notified schemes and claim deduction for the 25,000. Third one is preventing health checkup, which is uh, basically uh, in, in respect of expenditure incurred on day-to-day -day health checkups. Uh, you can, in respect of which you can claim deduction of two rupees five lakh. So basically, maximum deduction in respect of A, B, or C medical insurance premium contribution to CGS and preventive health checkup, you can claim deduction maximum only for twenty-five thousand. So you can claim deduction twenty-five plus twenty-five, uh, fifty thousand aggregate. Second one is medical expenditure on the health of a person who is senior citizen 60 years of more uh, if medical claim insurance is not paid on the health of such person so you can claim a uh, deduction under section uh, 80d for the uh, senior citizen rupees 50000 and 50000 separately for the parents 
so maximum deduction you can claim that is uh, under category a 50 25000 and under category b 50000 and c maximum deduction you can claim 50000 for the self spouse or dependent children and maximum deduction in respect of parents you can claim 50000 so combined deduction is 50 plus 50 1 lakh so important points to remember under section 80d uh, is uh, you have to submit evidence of payments invoice bills uh, etc uh, so that you can claim uh, deduction under section 80d and deduction is available only for the actual payment and parents includes fathers and mother depend otherwise father in law and mother in law not included in the definition of parents and for the preventive health checkup you can claim deduction even if you are incurring expenditure in cash up to rupees 5000 and last one is in case of single health premium insurance policy having cover more than one year the deduction shall be allowed on proportionate basis for the number of years suppose for example you have taken insurance premium policy for the five year so you can deduction you can claim deduction uh, in the first year only for the one year and the rest of the four year will be allowed proportionally in the four years third one is deduction is interest on loan so you almost taking various kind of loan uh, for the car loan, home by home loan, and education loan. So there is an, uh, a provision under the uh, various provision of income tax to claim interest uh, in respect of loan taken. The first one is home buyers. So under section 24 of the Act, so there is an, a provision for to claim deduction in respect of home loan taken. So that is deduction available to be two lakhs. Second one is ATEAA. So it is basically for the first time uh, buyers from AY 2020. So this is additional reduction up to rupees 1.5 lakh. Third one is uh, electronic vehicle loan uh, that is covered under section 80 EEB. So you can uh, claim for uh, deduction in respect of interest payable on interest vehicle loan and the maximum cap is rupee 1.5 lakh. And last one is section 80. So that talks about interest payable on education loan so you can claim full exemption in respect of actual uh, interest payable on education loan so fourth one is uh, uh, you are incurring expenditure on some kind of donation and grants uh, given to various trusts and societies charitable funds institutions so the uh, sub provisions also exist in respect of these donations so first one is a tg so you are claimed you can claim deduction under section a tg for the donation to certain charitable fund and institutions so which are registered basically under section uh, uh 10a 10 g and we, the here the maximum cap is 10 percent of annual income and second one is uh a tgga so basically you are uh, giving donation to some scientific research or rural development and you can claim still full exemption of some paid third one is uh donation to political parties so here the no cash payment is allowed only you can uh, pay to the political parties by check and you can claim full exemption of some paid uh, so second one is uh, here in this category is uh, interest so you almost are uh, earning interest from saving bank account and from rds and uh, fixed deposits so here you can claim deduction in respect of interest income uh, to rupees 10000 in case of saving bank account interest and uh, here the reduction for the uh, senior citizen also in respect of interest on fds that is uh, deduction up to rupees 50000 so under section 80 tta deduction is uh, only for the saving bank interest so interest from rds and fds is still taxable there is no exemption but uh, interest from fds and rds are still exempt up to rupees 5000 in case of senior citizen under section 80 ttb so thanks thanks a lot everyone to watching this lecture and you can find me at, at the my mail id carishop.tax at the gmail.com and mobile number is triple nine zero five six double four three four so thanks a lot for uh, to give me a chance to present this lecture and uh, we will definitely connect once again thanks bye